now we're going to discover a new theme and we're going to use this theme to evaluate a limit of this type infinity over infinity, which is what we call an indeterminate form. Okay, first, let's find the limit of one over x as x going to infinity. When x going to positive infinity, one over x go to zero. So what happens when you have this function one over x to the 0 0.5? Well, which is x to the one half power, right? When x go to positive infinity, x to the 0 0.5 power also go to positive infinity. So one dividing by a quantity going to positive infinity, then it's going to go to zero. So that also go to zero. Now, what happened when x going to negative infinity? One over a quantity that is going to be large and large, larger and larger negative, that is going to go to zero also. Now you can think about this example. Okay, imagine the denominator here going to be more and more negative. Okay, you see this result here, the quotient here is getting closer and closer to zero, but it's going to stay negative, right? Okay, so the limit here is also zero. Similarly, one over x to the one third power, well, which is the key root of x, as x going to negative infinity, that will also go to negative infinity. So the denominator go to negative infinity, but the numerator stay the same as one. So one over this quantity, then the limit will be equal to zero. So when you look at this example here, um, you see most of the limit laws in section 2.3 uh, also holds for limit at infinity or negative infinity. Uh, that is, they are also valid if x going to a is replaced by x going to infinity or x going to negative infinity. So in particular, if we combine the power law and root law with the above results, we obtain this following thing right here. So this thing says that this function one over x to the r power, uh, r here is a positive rational number such that x to the r is defined then what happened here is when x going to infinity or when x going to negative infinity, this function is going to approach to zero. So this limit here is equal to zero. So let's call this theme here, theme A, okay? Now we're gonna use this theme to evaluate uh, some limit here. So we try to evaluate this limit here. Now, first, um, if you think about what happened here, uh, in the numerator, uh, x squared is when x goes to infinity, x squared is much larger than x. So the numerator actually going to infinity and also the denominator is also dominating by this x squared. So the denominator also going to infinity. So basically this is the type infinity over infinity type. Uh, it is what we call an indeterminate form, okay? So we don't jump into conclusion what this limit here is. We need to do some algebra with it, okay? So uh, a trick to do evaluate this type of limit here it's going to be divide by, it's going to be dividing the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator. So you see the denominator here? The highest power here is x to the second power. So we're gonna divide x to the second power up and down here. So this is the trick uh, in the book. So when you divide by x squared up and down here, so each turn over here is going to divide by x squared. So leaving you with this, so three x squared divided by x squared is three. Negative x divided by x squared is negative one over x. Negative two divided by x squared is negative two over x squared. Similarly, the denominator here, this divided by that is five. This divided by that is four over x. This divided by that is one over x squared. Uh, according to the quotient of our limit and also the difference and sum law for the limit, we can break it into this separate part right here. Um, so limit of the quotient is quotient of the limit. Limit of the difference is the difference of the limit. Limit of the sum is the sum of the limit. So we can break them apart into this. So this limit over here is equal to three. The limit of a constant is the constant itself. This limit over here is equal to zero according to the theme that we just went over, theme A. Okay. This over here, uh, the two here is a constant multiple. Uh, one over x squared as x going to infinity according to theme A is going to go to zero. So it will be, the limit for that will be two times zero. Similarly, this limit is five. This limit here is four times zero. This limit here is zero. So the result here is three over five. So we're using the trick from the book. Uh, the trick over here is to divide the numerator and denominator here 
uh, by the highest power of this denominator, which is x squared. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you guys a shortcut. Uh, this shortcut over here is like this. Now, when you have a limit as x goes to infinity of this rational function, which is a polynomial divided by polynomial, uh, we'll focus on the dominating term. So what do you mean dominating? Okay. Now, if you have taken computer science class, uh, we talk about the big O of x, big, big O of x squared. Uh, you see, when x goes to infinity, x squared is going to go to infinity much faster than x because this exponent is two bigger than one. Um, so we say this, it's going to dominate over this. It's like, for example, when x is a thousand, then this is a thousand, x squared is a million. A million compared to a thousand is much bigger. Okay, so that is going to dominate over this. Okay, so we look at the dominating chain over here. So 3x squared dominating the numerator, 5x squared dominating the denominator. So in the long run, when x goes to a positive infinity, uh, the behavior of this function is going to be very similar to 3x squared over 5x squared. So you take a look at 3x squared over 5x squared. Uh, if you reduce it, it's going to become 3 over 5. So when x go to infinity, uh, the limit of this is going to be 3 over 5. So we just look at the dominating trend up and down here. Okay, so you see that x squared over here uh, go to infinity much faster than x. So the x squared terms dominate over other terms that have lower degrees. Now what about this limit over here? Well, again, x going to positive infinity. Uh, let's look at the dominating trend. Uh, x squared dominate here, x cubed dominate over here, because this, because x squared here, uh, this power is going to be the highest power in the numerator. And this x cubed here is the highest power in the denominator. So those are the dominating chain. So we look at the dominating chain. So 3x squared over 5x cubed, if we reduce it, it's going to be 3 over 5x. So when x goes to infinity, what happened here? The denominator going to infinity, 3 over that is going to go to 0. So when x go to infinity, this function here is in the, when x go to infinity, it's going to go to the same limit, which is going to be 0. Now, what about this one? When x go to infinity, uh, look at the dominating chain over here. 3x to 4, 5x cubed, reduce it, is 3x over 5. When x go to infinity, the numerator go to infinity, the denominator stay the same as phi. So the result here uh, is not going to be real number, it's actually going to be infinity. So this limit over here will be infinity, same limit over here. Now, after this example, let's summarize our shortcut over here. Okay, so we want to see a pattern. So when we try to find limit of a quotient, okay, uh, we will look at the dominating terms. So when we try to find the limit of a rational function, we can look in the dominating trends over here, okay? So if the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator, then what happened here is the limit will be equal to zero. Um, if you look at the example we went over, uh, you see that you're going to have um, x in the denominator survive. So this whole quotient here, when x goes to infinity, will go to zero. Now what happens when the degree above here is going to be bigger than the degree down here? Then the limit here will go to infinity or negative infinity. When the degree in the numerator and the denominator are equal, when they are the same, then the limit here will be equal to the quotient of the leading coefficient, which is the example we went through. Okay, So let's go, go back to this example. Uh, you see over here, the numerator and denominator have the same degree. So we look at the dominating chain here. And the limit will be equal to 3 over 5. It's a quotient of the leading coefficient right here. Okay. Now over here, when the degree above here, less than the degree down here, then the limit here is equal to 0. When the degree above greater than the degree down here, as x goes to infinity, that is going to go to infinity. If I have a minus sign over here, then that would go to negative infinity.
Now this example, we try to find this limit here. Now this is a type infinity over infinity type, okay? So you see this part go to infinity, this part go to infinity. Uh, you, you may argue that it is infinity over neg infinity, but we put them in the same category. We call that infinity over infinity. So this category including infinity over neg infinity. So we use the trick uh, from the book. So again, we're going to divide by the highest power of x in the denominator, which is going to be x squared. So we're going to divide x by x squared up and down here. So this divide by that, this is x to the one half power divided by x squared. So that will be one over x to the three half power. And if you write it in this power form, you can write it as x to the negative three half power. Okay, so we got this. This divided by that is one. This by this, this divided by this is two over x. This divided by that is negative one. As x going to infinity, this is gonna to go to zero. That is gonna stay as one. That go to zero, that stay as one. So the limit here, it is negative one. Now, if we use our shortcut, let's see um, if we get the same result. So we look at the dominating train over here. So the dominating train is a train that has highest power on x. So this is x squared and this is negative x squared. So they dominate. So x squared over negative x squared uh, is equal to negative one. So this limit is negative one. So you got the same result. Okay, so this one over here. Again, this is the type infinity over infinity type, both this one and this one go to infinity. So it is an indeterminate form. So what we do over here is we're going to use the same trick, um, the one from the book. So we're going to divide up and down by the highest power of x in the denominator. So we're going to divide by x cubed. Divide by x cubed. Okay. Now divide by x cubed over here. Now this one here has this uh, square root. So divide by x cubed is the same as divide by square root of x to the six. Notice that when x goes to infinity, x is positive eventually, right? So when x is positive, x cubed is positive square root of x to the six. So these two are equivalent. So that will get give you nine, and this will be one over x to the fifth power. Okay, the denominator, uh, you just do the algebra, you get this divided by this one, this divided by this is one over x cubed. When x go to positive infinity, this part here go to zero, this go to zero, okay. So you use the quotient law, root law, difference law, sum law, and also the theorem A, okay, on page three. Uh, so this limit over here is equal to square root of nine, square root of nine over here, uh, which is going to be equal to positive three. Now let's use our shortcut to see if we get the same result here. So when x go to positive infinity, we look at the dominating train over here. You see uh, in the numerator, the dominating train is this um, square root of nine x to the sixth power. You have to consider the square root also. Nine x to the sixth power is inside the square root, okay? So the numerator, when x go to infinity, is gonna behave very similar to the square root of nine x to the sixth power. The denominator here is going to be dominating by this x cube. And when you simplify them over here, you get three. So this limit here is equal to three, which is going to be same result.